All right, we are downtown San Antonio. And ready to see all the fun things. Welcome back to another adventure. Today, we are taking you along on our trip to San Antonio, Texas, where we are gonna see the Alamo and the water walk and so much more. This trip was actually taken last year and I've been delayed in getting this footage up on YouTube, but I hope that you will still get to enjoy this adventure with us. We hadn't even been in San Antonio for more than five minutes before we found something exciting. They were doing a live reenactment outside of the Alamo. How'd you feel about it? You didn't like it? <laughs> what were we gonna go do then? Uh, this Wait, ranger here just told me that there's one of these has a Lego replica of the Alamo. He said over 50,000 bricks to make it. Cool. Woo, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. They said don't touch the table. Oh. This is it. Oh. 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 There's nobody there. Yeah, we're gonna go this way and check out the water rock. Go. What do you think it is? That is cool. Yeah? Rachel, what do you think it is? McDonald's No, not that's not a McDonald's sign. She was saying over there there's a McDonald's. But what's this? What do you think it is? A stand up bow? Look right here. Come read this guy. This is the black the plaque for it. 
It's called the Torch of Friendship. It's a symbol that stands for the unity and friendship that exists between Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Isn't that cool? After walking much of the water walk and exploring San Antonio, we decided to stop and take a break. We found a really entertaining, funny street performer um, right outside the Wax Museum that was doing all sorts of magic tricks and stand-up comedy, and it was so much fun to watch them while we waited for Daddy as he went to go get the kids a special treat. I only got enough for four, so a living tent they're gonna end up licking. Bye, Kitty! <laughs> for one sec, guys. Oh, Daddy's sacrificing for you. My dad used to do that too. He always said he was sacrificing. Hey, Dad! Yeah. Uh, it was about <laughs> to fall. I need my ice cream to eat. After we were done with our ice cream, it was time to go visit the Alamo. So it says, originally the two small gated rooms on either side of the entrance were used for religious purposes. Yep. Because they went into the different rooms. That's what they were saying. Two stories. Okay, that makes you sense. see that right here, like go to the corner. Yeah, that that's why there's doors up high. Because it used to be a second story. And to break and break down. And so they're doing what they can to preserve it and keep it working. But and it's our yeah, somebody. Out. Yep, somebody carved in. All right, let's see. What's that over here? Okay. So these are, plaques are all in honor of the people who died at the Alamo. But this one is a special one. It says in honor of those Alamo heroes whose names history did not record. Because there were some people that they don't know who was actually there. And so that's for any of those that weren't named. But all of these are people who died in the Alamo. Mm -hmm. There's someone from Germany. Yep, Germany, Tennessee, Ireland, North Carolina, a black freedman. So they don't have well, his first name. They just call him John. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll find it. That's named after James Bowie. So the Bowie knife is named after him and Davy Crockett and James Butler. Wait, Davy Crockett? Yeah, Davy Crockett died here, like what? in the like in the building we're in. Why? What do you mean why? Because he's in a battle. <laughs> he was fighting for freedom. I wish he was a girl. You wish he was a girl. What? what? Right, that's the church where we're at. That's where we're in. So if you look right here, so. Number one is the Travis Commandos. That's right here. So this whole wall in me, the Alamo Church was a corner of it. Nice. Okay. Travis. Um, number two was the 18 pounder, which is the largest cannon. Let's find number two, guys. Right here. 18 pounder, largest cannon. Okay. What's number three say, Joshua? Yeah, they go to another room we saw earlier. Hey, mommy, look out for that one. That's the same room that we came in the last time. So that's where the women and children hid during the Alamo. Why? Because yes. there was fighting going on and people attacking them. Rachel. Oh, what would you do if people were fighting? <laughs> Fight? No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the Alamo gift shop, but we're gonna go around here to the garden area.
Ask Joshua, what happens when you touch a cactus, Joshua? She touched her. I backed It wasn't you? No, it was me. Rachel, what'd you do? Don't touch it. She, you, you said don't touch and she went. And then you accidentally backed up into one. Planted in every grass area. Every, every grass area has to have a new... Look at how pretty this is. Cactus. Cactus. It's pretty awesome. So this is made to shoot game birds. We can shoot bird shot or buck shot, but in times of warfare, we're shooting a solid ball. So this is no. a 54 caliber. So we're shooting a 53 caliber ball. This probably oh, yeah. it, it does. I, I tell you, it does. we fire live rounds out of these things. So. This one, that's the same as the musket because it's not rifle. Yeah, this is a shotgun. Shotgun. Uh, doctors can repair those. Uh, I've actually had accounts that men that had been bayoneted, about, about 10 out of um, 15 men actually survived the bayonet and they were back in the weeks. But, uh, but yeah, it's just going to leave a nasty wound. And it's, you know, the thing about with that as well, when you stab a person with that, it's going to push in the blood and that will cause infection. This is six pound yeah, solid shot of This just would have been fired yeah, right at the wall. Right at the wall. Over, over and over again. Yeah. I've hit it enough times, it's bound to come down, right? Uh, they also uh, fired it at people, as you can see here. That's from the Battle of Water. Yeah, that's a four pound shot to give you an idea. Now, they were. Just, now, this cannon can fire up to a mile. And this is a small kit, relatively, maybe small to mid-sized kit. Dad's inside getting our shot glass, and we're gonna come check out these cool statues. There's James Bowie, the one that did the Bowie knife, the Bowie knife named after. Morgan's slaves. West is one of the Texas best known legends. On April 16, 1836, West and other residents of New Washington were captured by the Mexican army. West was forced to travel with the forces of the general um, as they prepared to face General Sam Houston and the Texan army. This to be the inspiration behind the Yellow Rose of Texas song. So she's holding a rose and she's got a bag and a canteen. Oh, horn. Yeah, it looks like a cannonball. Erected in grateful recognition of the supreme act of heroism of the 32 men from Gonzales who gave their lives in the Alamo in response to the appeal of Travis. So this was built in honor of them. Oh no, this is part of the barracks. Okay, so this is the Spanish hospital. Wow. That's a Hmm. You're in a hospital, kind of. That's the millstone. We can go in. Yeah. Yeah. They have floss. Yeah. They got string. They have floss, right? Yeah. So I don't know if uh, you don't have dentists 
going around and saying you lost your teeth. Uh, but some of them probably are. People, if they don't have their toothbrush, they're just taking their teeth with their teeth. I feel like it's one of those things. Everybody has a high heat at the You guys are standing inside of the dog. Okay, so it says archaeology. You guys know what that is, right? Yeah. Archaeology is a tool that helps us better understand the use of a particular place and the people who inhabit it. Back up. Let me read. The grounds of the Alamo and its structures have a long history of use, beginning in 1724 with the establishment of the mission. Since then, the site has served as a military fort and a stronghold for the Texas Independence Movement. A quartermaster depot for the U.S. Army, a commercial center for the city of San Antonio, and a historical site visited by roughly 1.6 million people every year. Each of these time periods leaves behind evidence buried in the ground that archaeologists collect and analyze. Part of that evidence is known as stratigraphy, the study of ground layers, or strata. That's where, either purposely placed by people or accumulated on the grounds over time, the stratigraphy of long barracks reveals evidence from its earliest years of construction, 1724, to the current floors installed. Okay, so look, guys, look. When you see, you can see what the ground looks like, and then you can see, like, even here, like, the tile, like, the, in here from now. Yes, yeah, so you can see the different kinds of floors that have been here. So, what are we rating the Alamo on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, X. The whole trip. 10, Joshua. Nine, ten. Ten. Christopher, what are you rating the whole trip? Camp and the Alamo. Oh, that's uh, a nine. A nine. All right, that's high for you. Said All right, ten. Olivia. One hundred. Kenzie. It's a ten. Yes, but what did you rate it? One to ten. Uh, yes, it was very, very cool. Rachel was a little nervous about all the talking about fighting and death, but it was really, really fun. And now I think we're gonna close up this adventure. I don't know, maybe if something else exciting happens, but I think we're gonna close up this adventure and we'll talk to you guys next time. No! Say bye! No! Say bye! bye. Wait, what, wait, what about?